How's it going, people? I'm in the mood to talk about Sodom and Gomorrah. That's the kind of day I'm having. Besides, it uh, it's the last leg of my little talk on homophobia and the Bible, Abrahamic religion. So, I'm going to start off by comparing Sodom and Gomorrah to its doublet in the book of Judges. Coincidentally, both the chap both chapter 19. So, I did some parallel reading. Got my notes above me. That's why I keep looking up. Uh, I've done some horizontal reading, and I got them laid out side by side. So, I'm just going to read them off. But, uh, anyway, this, all right, when the early story is the most elaborate and supposedly the one that happened many centuries ago later, I mean, Sodom and Gomorrah happened in the time of the patriarchs, supposedly. Gibb of Benjamin happened during the time of the judges, and they were many centuries apart. I mean, they'd spent 400 years in Egypt, supposedly. So, a long time apart. Probably about 700 years or more. Animals. I don't know. I'm not an expert. Just read the book. Um, so, horizontal reading. Genesis 19, 1-3. When the two angels reached Sodom, in the evening, Lot was sitting at the gate of, of Sodom. Why would he be doing that unless he was expecting somebody? Um, like I said, this is an over elaborate version of the other. Um, as soon as Lot saw them, he stood up to greet them and bowed to the ground. My lords, he said, please come down to your servant's house to stay the night and wash your feet. Then you can make an early start of your journey. No, they said, we shall spend the night in the square for some reason. <laughs> but he pressed them so much that they went home with him and entered his house. He prepared a meal for them, baking unleavened bread, and they had supper. All right, let's read the doublet. As they approached Gibba in Benjamin, the sun was setting, so they turned that way to spend the night in Gibba. Once inside, the Levite sat down in the town square, but no one offered to take them in for the night. So now we're talking about the law of hospitality, the custom of hospitality, which was a big deal back then still is in some places. Eventually, an old man came along at nightfall from his work in the fields, which makes more sense than just sitting at the gate when we don't have any mention of Lot being a prophet. He, too, was from the highlands of Ephraim, uh, uh, although he was living in Geba. The people of the place, however, were Benjamites. Looking up, he saw the traveler in the town square. Where are you going, said the old man, and where have you come from? We are on our way, the other one replied, from Bethlehem in Judah to a place deep in the highlands of Ephraim. I have been to Bethlehem, Judah, and now I am going home. But no one has offered to take me into his house, although we have straw and provender for our donkeys. And also I have bread and wine for myself, this maidservant, and the young man who is traveling with your servant. We are short of nothing. So we've got two men and uh, one woman little different, but it actually is numerically consistent. Welcome, said the old man. I shall see that you have all you want. 
You cannot spend the night in the square. Like the angels wanted to do. So he so he took them into his house and gave the donkeys provender. The travelers washed their feet, being human beings, and ate and drank. That's Judges 19, 14 through 21. Pretty damn similar. Wait, wait till you, yeah, this part. All right, Genesis 19, 4 and 5. They had not gone to bed when the house was surrounded by the townspeople. The men of Sodom, both old, both young and old, all the people without exception. All the people, you just said only the men. Calling out to Lot, they said, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Send them out to us so that we can have intercourse with them. All right, Judges 19, 22. While they were enjoying themselves, some townsmen, scoundrels, came crowding around, crowding around the house. They battered on the door and said to the old man, master of the house, Send out the man who went into your house. We should like to have intercourse with them, with him. But there's two men that, that came into that house. All right. Genesis 19, 6 through 8. Lot came out to them at the door and, having shut the door behind him, said, Please, brothers, do not be wicked. Look, I have two daughters who are virgins. I am ready to send them out to you for you to treat as you please. But do nothing to these men, since they are now under the protection of my roof. Two men. Suddenly they're men, not angels. You would have thought if they were really angels, old Lot would have said, Hey, these are angels. You don't want to fuck with them. Which is what you want to do. Judges. 19, 23, and 24. The master of the house went out to them and said, No, brothers, please do not be so wicked. Since this man is now under my roof, do not commit such an infamy. Here is my daughter. She is a virgin. I shall bring her out to you. Ill-treat her. Do what you please with her. But do not commit such an infamy with this man, this Levite priest. All right, this is where they get a little different. But they retorted, Stand back! This fellow came here as a foreigner, just like Lot. And now he wants to play the judge, just like Lot. Now we shall treat you worse than them. Ouch. Now they forced Lot back and moved forward to break down the house, down the door. But the men reached out, pulled Lot back into the house with them, and shut the door. And they dazzled those who were at the door of the house, one and all, with a blinding light, so that they could not find a doorway. Judges 19, 26. But the men would not listen to him, so the Levite took hold of his concubine and brought her out to them instead of the unnamed Lot's daughter. They had intercourse with her and ill-treated her all night till morning. When dawn was breaking, they let her go. At daybreak, the girl came and fell on the threshold of her husband's host. 
And she stayed there until it was light. Jesus. Gee, this is 1950. When dawn broke, the angels urged Lot on. To your feet! Take your wife and your two daughters who are here or you will be swept away in the punishment of the city. And that's Genesis 19.15. Judges 19.27-30 In the morning her husband got up and opening the door of the house was going to continue his journey when he saw the woman his concubine lying at the door of the house with her hands on the threshold. Get up, he said. We must leave. Their exclamation point, not mine. There was no answer. He then loaded her on his donkey and began the journey home. Having reached his house, he took his knife and took hold of his concubine and cut her limb by limb into twelve pieces. He then sent her throughout the territory of Israel. He gave instructions to his messengers. This is what you are to say to all the Israelites. Has anything like this been done since the days when the Israelites came out of Egypt until today? Take this to heart, discuss it, to give your verdict. Funny, you would think if Sodom and Gomorrah was a historical story, they would have said, hey, by the way, kind of familiar. But they don't. Because they're telling the same story and sticking it in a different historical period, which means... Genesis 19, 24 and 25. When Yahweh, then Yahweh rained down on Sodom and Gomorrah, brimstone of fire of his own sending. He overthrew, overthrew those cities and the whole plain and all the people living there. Judges 19, 20, 35. Yahweh defeated Benjamin before Israel and that day the Israelites were killed 25,100 men of, the ben of Benjamin, all of them trained swordsmen. And Judges 20, 41, because I just couldn't quote the whole thing, I don't have time. But the signal, a column of smoke, this is after a heated battle, uh, began to rise from the town and the Benjamites Looking back, saw the whole town going up in flames. That would be Gibba. To the sky, the Israelites turned about, and the Benjamites were seized with terror, for they saw that disaster had struck them. And I'll finish this in the next video.